Good morning and welcome to Off the Press. This is the program, as you know, where we take a look at the national dailies and make sense of it, uh, the newspaper review, if you like. And with me to do so this morning are two gentlemen, uh, Abayo Ab Mioke Ashiwaju, who is yeah, a public right. affairs <laughs> analyst, all the way from Ogun State. Thank yes, you so sir. very much for being Good here. Morning. And our in house, uh, Ugo Chuku Ikako, also public affairs analyst. Good to see you today. Thank you for having me. And happy new year, guys. Same to you. All right, let's do this. We have a couple of papers this morning right before us, but we'll begin with the Nation uh, newspaper. It's the one up for review now. And it says, Why I am constantly under attack by Oshomole. That's the big story there. You can see it displayed on your screen, and it's continued on page 41. And how Sani extorted $24,000 $24, from me. Um, court okays, okays detention, and that's on page 41 of the Nation newspaper. Or your anti grazing law breach of our rights, according to Heather and they sue, uh, they sue the government. That story is on page 39. Something on sports, Ndidi, Ndidi, Ihan Nacho in terrific festive form. Rogers praises boys, and that's on page 46 also. And right uh, under there, we see inside four die, others injured as truck falls on Lagos, Ibadan Expressway. That's unfortunate and sad, on page five. And of course, we have the picture story of the demolition of the family house of uh, former Senate President Bukola Saraki. Tension in Kwara State as government pulls down Saraki's building. That story is on page seven. We are reclaiming public property. That's according to the state government. And SNS presidents and groups PDP women protest. Uh, that's on page seven also. Mastermind of Abuja Bank robbery held. Good news on page four. Uh, Ondo to pay 30,000 minimum wage, uh, finally, on page 39. So where do we begin this morning? Where do you want to start? <laughs> okay, um, let's start from um, the Saraki's family house, because um, mm -hmm. when it happened yesterday, it actually attracted a lot of, um, yes, um, it got a lot of attention. And um, mm -hmm. why, in fact, I think it attracted more of criticism. Yes, people actually criticize the government. Yes, you know, there is always, um, the good reason and there's always um, the real reason. They're not reason. so good. Okay. Uh -huh. The good reason and, yeah, and the, the real, real reason. reason. You understand? Okay. Behind um, every... Yes, government has said, okay, uh, it's uh, that property is on the government property and um, they needed to, you know... Reclaim um, to it. Reclaim it. But one would um, look at it that one, you, the current government in power and um, the family of Saraki, they are not in tune. They are not yes on the same uh, page so any action taken by the government against this family will definitely be misinterpreted mm -hmm. and because of that that's why you need to consider the real reason now so if you truly have a genuine reason to do that then it, it shouldn't be seen as a witch hunt because mm -hmm. um, an attempt was made on tuesday it was reported and um, they came back on thursday midnight early hours in the early hours to you know, to ensure that that building. Why is it? Is that the kind of um, New Year gift to give um, choirs, or is that the kind of New Year gift that people ask for? It's not that I'm a fan of uh, the Syracuse, but for me, I just feel that um, sometimes government needs to tread on the path of caution, you know, so that you won't begin to get um, more. Uh, what do I call it? Enemies huh. for yourself as a government. Then at the end of the day, get more sympathizers for your so-called enemy because eventually what the government has done now will attract most in fact i started attracting more sympathizers mm -hmm. for the saraki family and guess what in the next um, two years saraki's family may come back to the stage again i mean political stage as the case may be what are your thoughts well, I, I think for me um, it is important to understand that especially in nigeria political setting uh, you get to have these issues especially with uh, uh, godfathers or people that you know when a new governor co come in place and there's a, there's a former governor there so there's mm. always this it's back this a bit of tension and every other thing it will normalize the nigeria political setting but it is it, abnormal mm. and it shouldn't be happening in, in today's world uh, the family the, the, the building in, in, in quote uh this bukala is saying that that belongs to my father and that's a former governor of state and he serves as, as as a place for the aged and people that don't have much for themselves mm. and their family has been t taking care of them for a long time. So even if the governor feels that there's something to be done about it, it should be done the right way. 
Right? There's, there's, there's always a legal channel to do something. Uh, did you serve them court papers? If you're demolishing the house because it stands, is there a place? Are you taking them to a new place? All right. Mm. If you go, if you, 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 yeah. If you're going to revoke the CFO of wherever because of the land use ad, of because the Nigeria land use ad is the problem. All right. So which is a different conversation altogether mm -hmm. off here. But if you're going to do that, is there a provision for those women, those people there? So the only thing that the governor of Kwara State has done with I don't understand what is happening with Sarkis family. I don't understand why Bwemi will, will be fine and this will be happening to his family dynasty. So uh, I don't know. Whatever yeah. issue you have with your brother, I think uh, family is first always. But if he feels that this is what he needs to do to honor his, father, his father's uh, uh, legacy, which is fine by them. But for me, the most important thing is that this whole thing has turned, once again, the political equation in Kwara State. Yeah. The same people that voted out the Sarkis for not being their darling in 2019 are the same people that are not crying. So what the governor has done is that him and his team, in a foolish way, they've brought back the sympathy back to the Sarakis. And in, in politics, that's a lot of capital that you can use to turn into something else. So yeah. it's a loss on their own part. And like you said, in the next couple of years, uh, it might not be because but somebody within that dynasty will mm -hmm. still come out again to say, okay, this is because we are dealing with a state that, 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 that over the last 20 years has fallen in love with these people. Yeah. Uh, from the uh, Bukhara's uh, father uh, and to himself in particular. So it's beyond APC. It's not like it's an APC thing. It's a Saraki family. The Kwara state is, the Saraki has an important role in that state. And they will still continue to milk it. Mm -hmm. And when a full, sorry, when a governor that doesn't understand makes foolish decision, a decision that is not smart, that is not nice, what you're doing is to help your opponent. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the circus at this point, because there are some people in that quarter state that believe that you are doing this thing against them, not him, because he is fine. Mm -hmm. he's, he's always going to be fine. There's nothing you do to him that will make him go broke. He's fine. Mm -hmm. So it's just the people of quarter that are, are pity that at the end of the day that will be on the street because the governor feel that let me do this thing against this guy. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, again, some of them say it's a piece of history that's just been taken down just like that. No, yeah, so, it, it is know, a bit of history. Um, they, they are still looking at it from that end. All right, so let's move away from the Sarai case. Any other story catching well, your it, attention? It, 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 ties into, it ties into what is happening in Edo State, all right? The, the, the issue between uh, Oshimole and, and Obaseki. Obaseki. So it's a godfather thing, it, and it started from the 1999. So for me, I think that's part of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of Obasanjo. He messed up our political culture up, all right? So when we came back with the democratic uh, dispensation in 1999, you had the, uh, the Chris Ubaz in the southeast, the Andy Ubaz in the southeast, they had the Adidibus and the rest of them in the mm. southwest, and had other people across the country. What you've done is that you've made it, you made it easy for people to normalize this, uh, this, this, this culture that is not supposed to be in, within our political system. So, mm. an Obaseki that is a governor supposed to be the one that in charge of what is happening in, in, the in Edo State, that you are the party chairman, is not your business. Your business is to organize the affairs of the party. So, when, you see, the, the funny thing is that when Oshimole was governor. He fought the Bunedos to a standstill. He made sure that he did everything humanly possible to make sure that I don't want to be controlled by the Bunedians. Mm -hmm. Now you have a governor in a state that is doing the same thing. So it's like, what is so you reap? I don't want history to. History is repeating history itself. History is repeating itself again, but Oshimole doesn't want to listen. And Obaseki is not willing to allow him to do that. Obaseki is not an ambode that will easily walk away. So there's a lot of dynamics here. It's also important for us to also <clears throat> consider it from this angle that um, political office seekers sometimes out of their desperation to always get power, they see some signs that signals that, okay, when I get there, I'm going to have issues with these so-called power brokers or power blocks that are helping me to get to power now. But because of their desperation, they ignore those signs. Because uh, just like what he said, if you check, there has always been issue with um, the godfathers mm -hmm. and their godsons. And so, but because we just want to get to power, just because we just want to be governed by homies, and you ignore those signs and you just feel that when I get there, I will handle him. And at the end of the day, the one you think you can handle will now say, listen, I understood or I, I played a role in how you got here. So I can always, you know, dictate the, the, the tone at any point in time. So our political office seekers should not show that desperation. The moment I notice if I'm seeking an, or a political office and I notice that, wait, all the people coming together to help me, what are they going to get back in return? I hope it's not that I will be like um, a sheep and they will, be, they will still have a rope in their hands. Mm -hmm. if, it, if I'm not going to be comfortable with it, why not just back out? Must you be the governor? Must you be the person in charge or must you be must you the political office? And I must say it's an unfortunate place to be. I mean, if that's how 
we find we found ourselves in uh, in terms of political. It, it happens everywhere. It happens in Lagos. Yeah, yeah. It happens in Lagos. For the last twenty years, one man has been doing it in the Lagos state. Not even only. In but Nigeria. I mean, the, the fact is that it's not normal. You know, no, it's, 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 not, it's, it's, no, it's not normal. It's an abnormal. Mm. It's abnormal. See, and it's not a bad thing to have people that sponsor. It's not a bad thing to have Godfathers. Mm. But the fact that we're in a state, we're in a country where the Godfathers themselves, starting from the one in Lagos state down to the one in Edo state, feels that are bigger than the state. Mm -hmm. That you, it's not a bad thing to play a part in helping someone achieve something. It's not a bad thing to help someone feel like oh, this person is good. But the Let main intention, it. the real but, intention of doing but it. But if, if the intention is for you to get the person in and to control the economy of the state, to control the coffers of the state, you're a bad person, you're a wicked person. Mm -hmm. right? Because you can, if you can play a statesman role, play a statesman role, there's nobody that goes into political office without people's help. There's nobody in history, there's nobody, not even Obama did it. Anybody that tells you that somebody wakes up and speak English and, and become elected is, is lying. Mm -hmm. So again, falls back to the good reason and the real and the reason, real reason. <laughs> according to you, the yes. good reason. All right, so we'll move away from this uh, paper in the interest of time, and then we would review the Punch newspaper. And it says, Accountant General uh, queried over non-disclosure of 57 billion Naira federal grants on page uh, 26 of the Punch newspaper already displayed there. And court extends Adoke's detention by 14 more days, that's two weeks precisely, on page 11. Boko Haram headsmen undermining agri sector, says World Bank. That story is on page 25. And my life in danger over 2023 presidency, PDP uh, uh, Board of Directors Chair Jibrin says on page 24. And then minimum wage negotiations. That's a big story for the Punch newspaper. Uh, Labour soft pedals as 15 states meet December 31st deadline. And that's the reason page two. And union gives states workers go ahead to continue talks. And again, we have the picture story of the demolition of the Saraki's uh, home there on Thursday. Um, and then group kicks. Uh, that story is on page 12. Headers drag or your government to court over anti-grazing law. I expect that Uguchugu will have something to say there on page 12. And truck crashes for in Lagos about an expressway crash on page 5. Uh, I started planning Abuja bank robbery in October. That's according to the banker in that same bank. The story is on pages 4 and 5. Where do we begin? Let's start with you. Um, the issue of the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I, I love what um, Ocean State Governor told uh, his workers. He said, let's see how we can come together to increase our hygiene. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, of course, our major source of income is our IGR and the federal government uh, allocation. Yeah. If we cannot boost our hygiene, if we cannot make more money, I see no justification to increase your wages. And I think that is how... Um, that is the approach that other governors to should because in the private sector that's how it works. If you are demanding for increase in um, salary or an emolument, then there must be a commensurate um, work from you to that is your own job, uh, your own your own role as an employee. What are you adding? What value are you adding? What value are you bringing? Mm -hmm. Is it obvious that um, the company is making more? Then there is a reason for me to earn more. You see, unfortunately, this is not the case when it comes to government work. As a matter of fact. The motivation for people to get government work isn't about the salary most times. It's always about the illegal money or the uh, undue money that they usually make from, yes, through extortion, through bribery, and all that. That's, what, that's why you notice that sometimes government will not pay civil servants and they will still be living fine. Doing well. Doing well. And you now ask yourself, where did they get the money from? You are not being paid salary for months and uh, you, you didn't resign one, two. You are still living fat. So let us sit together. That's, uh, honestly, if I were a governor at this moment and you are seeking for um, increasing your wages and all that, I would say, let us sit down. Let us see how we can increase. See, let's block all O's. Let's block all leakages. Let money come straight directly to the government. Then I will pay you your deal. I will pay you your normal wage. I will pay you your normal salary mm. so that we can all live well on what is just and fair. Not that I will increase us and at the same time, you will still not help me to improve the idea of the state. Goshuko, do you agree? I totally disagree. <laughs> I okay. can right. see so you want to I, interject. I, 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 it, it doesn't make sense. All right. We're talking about Oshun State that the governor, I don't think he's here to constitute an executive council. Mm -hmm. Right, or if he did, maybe just of recent, or this same person that the state is, is in debt from the time of Ariba Shola down to this, 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 this new guy. All right, what has it done? They have over, over bloated expenses, they live in big houses, they drive big cars, they have security votes that, that, that amount to billion every, every month. What has it done? 
right? He has been there for how many more years now? What has he done to drive the IGR? See, it is not the responsibility of the workers, of the state workers, to drive IGR for you. That is why you're the governor. That is why you have a commissioner for finance. That is why you have commission for, uh, uh, other commissioners in terms of budget planning and the rest of them. It is your primary duty. And also, if you fail to do that, if you have civil servants that are not performing well, what you do is there's what we call performance uh, analysis and performance measurement in the private sector. Prune them. If they're not there, let them go. And paying somebody 18,000 naira minimum wage in wow. this country is unjust and wickedness because the governor does not collect 18,000. He should collect 18,000. He drives a nice car. He drives one of the latest cars. He drives the 2020, if possible, 2020 uh, Land Cruisers and the rest of them. What is he doing? You're closely following him. No, no. That, that is all of them. That is the MO across, <laughs> across the whole country. Some of them have private jets. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? What are you doing in Austrian State? Why, what, what are you doing in Austrian State that you have that kind of luxury for yourself in a state where people are poor? So it does not make sense. Yeah, it's easy for us to berate the civil servants and say they are poor and rest of the They are a product of the system that the governor is in charge of. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're not doing well. It's because of the governor. So because everything rises and falls under leadership. I'm not going to blame a civil servant that does not know much. Especially that a governor, that you are a governor, you are elected to improve the state. You are elected to drive IGR. You are elected to drive reforms. You are not doing that. The only thing that you're doing is making money. And according to the constitution, you're supposed to constitute a council within a particular time. You've not done that. Yeah, so, that. So who is to be blamed? You, you fail because if you're serious about driving IGR, Part of the first few appointments we should have made is to have a commissioner for finance, a for budget planning, and the rest of them. You've not done that. So it's easy for us to break this thing. All these governors, if they want to pay this money, they will pay it. So what they will do is to cut off from what they are spending on themselves. What are you doing with one billion naira for security vote every year? What are you doing? Are they still not, are they still not kidnapping people? Are they not killing people in Ocean State? Is Ocean uh -huh. State uh, Jerusalem? Nope. So at the end of the day, it is the tax of the governor to do that. So that is what I'm saying. See, it's easy. See, I will never be in a position where mm -hmm. I put down these people over the leaders. Because at the end of the day, the leaders have more responsibility over the people. And it's what it's supposed to be. From Kogi State, these are the governors that have held salaries for more than seven months, six months. Him and, he, him and the guy, in, what's that young guy that's not doing anything in, in Kogi them. State? Yeah. He, they are in the same WhatsApp group. They've they they decided not to do anything <laughs> meaningful for their people. <laughs> so I, we can't praise them or we can't excuse them for being failures in what they're doing. So for me, you that see, is it. For me, I'm not um, exonerating the Are you saying it's contributory at Yes, all? yes. You see, you know, the, the commissioners and the likes, they are on an eternal basis, eternal basis, unlike um, the civil servants. The civil servants are there for at least and for, the, you know 30 they are, they are permanent they are permanent secretaries they are permanent also, secretaries what is the governor doing to drive those HOS. reforms so even if you don't want to work with commissioners you can still work with your HOA, the head of service no, but and the, 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 the law the law the law the law asks for this and you see that is see, the law asks for the but the law did not it, give it, a particular it, time it, that it, they no, can it. It, it, it ties back to what we're saying for what we're saying about you know uh other issues what we mentioned earlier about uh illegality doing some things that something makes that something is okay doesn't make it right See, yeah. we, 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 it's like in this country, when we had, during the first time of our, uh, Buhari, for six months, there was no economic council. You are sending a signal to the investors. You are sending a signal to some set of people that this is, what, this is, this is how I want to do business. Mm -hmm. Your permanent secretary is a permanent secretary. He is there. He is doing his business as a government official. So you need somebody that beyond that that can interface with some of these people that can attract investment to you. And if you're a governor, you're not doing that. Nobody's supposed to clap for you. You're supposed to be ashamed of yourself. Mm -hmm. But we're in a country where they drive big cars. Their wives will commission a non-existing building. As first ladies and the rest of that, and what are they doing to help the poor people? Nothing. Mm -hmm. That's unfortunate. We'll move away. Yeah, I know, move, I know you want to well. quickly respond, but <laughs> let's move away from that story in the interest of time. And then, headers drag, drag or your government to court over anti grazing. We have the guy who said he started planning the uh, robbery from October, who's a banker, and so. I think bank, uh, banks and every other organizations they need to be doing a, more of a, a background check on who they employ these days. You understand? A deeper. A deeper background they, check. They could, they must be doing that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how they were able to uh, get that guy into their system. Uh, he wouldn't then, have come in and say I'm an armed robber. I, I know, I know, but there are, there are certain things that needs to be put in place. For okay, I, I've run an election before. I've, I've, I've been. I'm, I'm a kind. I was a candidate, and I'm aware that um, DSS did a background check on me. Mm -hmm. Even I, I was worked in a bank as well, and I also I'm also aware that um, my uh, my parents were called at some point. You know. People that I dropped their number, they were called to confirm about who uh, I really am, or as the case may be. So some of this background check, I don't know if um, some of these banks still go ahead to, if they still do some of these things. Because this guy is their own. In fact, a customer service um, uh, agent is the one who now connive with a customer. 
In fact, as a matter of fact, the customer wasn't even a robber. I don't know what he saw in that guy, probably because he had dreads. <laughs> Maybe that was the attraction for him to have said, oh, I think you should be able to come and That's not a rob. good thing to say. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> okay, sorry, you have dreads. <laughs> but you are a lady, <laughs> but it's a guy. No, so I mean, it's, that, it, it's stereotypical. But, 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 but let's move but, forward. But for me, I think mm. at least it, it goes down to the question that, you know, our security system, both internal and public, that we need to do more work. We need to do more work in terms of uh, investigation, in terms of being proactive on mm -hmm. how we respond to issues, right? Uh, because a lot of things could have gone wrong when that thing, when, when that thing happened on that day, when the robbery happened that day. So is 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 a minus for the bank themselves. It's a minus on them. And it's, it's also a, it's a, it, what they have to do now is to measure up and see what they can do so this doesn't happen, doesn't repeat itself again. Mm -hmm. Now for what the for the anti grazing law in in, in your state yeah. and what the headers are saying, uh, a, a state has right to make laws that they feel that is important for their security and their well-being. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if your state under marking, they feel like, okay, uh, this you guys moving around the state, trespassing around the state. 200 of them weaponized. Weaponized. There, there's room for conflict. There's room for fight. There's room for uh, disturbing the peace of the state. If the state says, okay, because of that, we want to make a provision so that what you have will be like grazing place mm -hmm. so that you, you get you get a particular portion, you stay there to do your business. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing. This is how it is done in civilized countries of the world. There is no place in this world from Brazil to Holland where they have cows like us in this part of the world. And their cows are better than us, mm -hmm. more healthier. They don't take them around the country. They don't put them on a marathon like the Kenyan guys around across the whole world. Mm -hmm. They keep them in the place, <laughs> feed them well, and mm -hmm. they make sure that they have healthy milk and healthy meat that people can consume. So they're not roving around the street. They're not roving around, around the street. They're not, they're not making life difficult for other people. So it, it, it's also it, this sense of entitlement mm -hmm. that the whole country is, you have to just go around the whole country. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. As a matter of fact, the law mm -hmm. is even protecting the real headsmen. Mm -hmm. Because the law states that come, get registered. Let's have, let, let, we're not we, stopping you from we're not business. Stopping you, yes, we, but well. we just want to be able to trace you, just like what we talked about the bank, the banker guy. Mm -hmm. So let us come register. Let us be able to trace you and say so that we'll be able to separate the infiltrators, the ones who are with the real intent of um, you know criminal intent, so that mm -hmm. we'll be able to separate them for you, real guys. So I don't know why they are protesting against that law. That law is even favorable to them, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, well, I believe uh, we should. If we do the right thing, everything will fall in place. Yeah. So let's go to Vanguard newspaper very quickly. Just read out the headlines. And Angote remains richest man in Africa on page 19. Right. <laughs> My mission is to end Godfatherism in Edo State. That's according to Obaseki on page 33. And federal government spent 55. 0.5 billion naira to subsidize petrol in December 2019. And again, the tension in, in Lorraine as Kwara State government demolishes late Saraki's Ilia Rubo home. Uh, you know, urges Kwarans to remain calm as PDP Saraki Riyadh. We talked about that already. We were right to detain Shawore uh, Dasuki despite court orders. That's according to Malami, actually. Uh, he had a statement on that in a live uh, interview, actually. Anti open grazing law, Fulani had a sue Oyo State government and assembly. Uh, as already mentioned, she will sign meets his accuser, Daudu. And that story is on page two on the $30,000 bribe allegation. And um, yeah, that's about it. So we'll just take one story here. I think, I think for me, for me, it, it's sad in 2020, January mm -hmm. 3rd, so I, I want to believe. Mm -hmm. that you want I, to believe? That's what it is. That, so that, <laughs> that, that, that is what we, but I want to believe so because mm -hmm. it, it looks like uh, the AGF things that were still in the 17th century. Mm -hmm. Because there is no reason on God's green earth where there is a law that says list somebody and the AGF of the state goes on BBC and keeps repeating himself every day that it is right for him to do this. It's wrong. So my take is this. If the NBA, yesterday they were complaining, the NBA had a statement that, about how the, 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 the presidency made it difficult for them to do their job last year. If the NBA is a serious organization, they should derobe this guy when he's mm. done whatever he's doing in, in Asuro. They've done it before in the past because there's no way you're an AGF that you're supposed to be there to help make sure that, that things are done right constitutionally. Mm. And you're working every day to make sure that illegality, the abuse of the constitution is what should be the hallmark of your, of your tenure as an AGF. He should be dropped. He, sh he should not be there because there's no way. Whether Dasuki or Showare, as far as there's a court order, there's an existing court order that says, leave this guy, let him go. There should be obedience of the rule of law. Unfortunately, Time now, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to sympathize with um, Senator Shehu Sani anyway. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, because I feel something <laughs> is wrong somewhere. We really need to hear from his own side of, side the, story of the story so that we'll be able to have a, a balanced and a fair judgment on uh, All right. what is actually happening to him. Okay, so we see how that unfolds. Mm -hmm. And that's where we thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, uh, for coming. Thank you. And by your me, okay, Ashiwaju yeah. and uh, Ugochuku Ikako. Ikako. And that's where we're going to wrap it. But before we go, please grab a copy of this day newspaper and find 
find out the 20 women who will shape events in 2020 in Nigeria. And that's where we call it a wrap. I am Amaka Okoye saying have yourselves a good day.